Hey guys, so in today's video I'm going to do something a little bit different. Um, after all, this channel is not just about reselling, it's about me and my life, what's going on in my universe. So today I wanted to talk about what's going on with everything lately and how it's affected me personally, um, anxiety wise. So, um, if, if you guys are just coming here to hear about reselling, this video really isn't going to be about reselling today. Um, it's just going to be about, um, how I've been feeling, um, affected just personally within the past week or week and a half. So I've never really been um, this person that's had a lot of anxieties. I would say that my anxieties have um, been more internal anxieties over the years. I don't show my anxiety all that much. I internalize my worries and my fears. Um, I typically bottle them up and hold them inside. I don't like to show that part of myself. Um, I can typically hide it pretty well, but I am an emotional person. So a lot of times I, I'm very passionate about the things that I do, about my family, about things that I pour my heart out into. I, I have this passion inside of me. So when I get really passionate about things, I do get emotional. Um, I've always been that way. At 47 years old, I'm still that way and I can't help it. This issue going on in the world, in my city, it's just really hard on me right now. You know, I think a lot of times social media like Facebook and all can make those things worse because all I'm seeing right now is people arguing back and forth whether or not things should be open back up, if they should stay closed, and then people arguing, well, don't take my rights away. And then other people saying, you know, you can choose to stay home if you want to. That's your choice. Don't take away my right to choose. I get all those arguments. But, you know, for me personally, it's not been that hard up until recently. And I don't know why I'm feeling the way that I am now. But um, when all of this started happening in my town, um, I started working from home. So I'm still working. There's some people that aren't working, but me personally, I'm still working. I'm just working at home. There's four of us in my household. My son works at the same place I do. He goes to work every day. My oldest son works. He goes to work every day. My husband is a mechanic. He goes to work every day. Through all of this, we have all four of us in this home, we've continued to work. My other kids, my other son is a mailman. He's continued to work. I've heard people on social media, resellers complaining about packages. I've heard other resellers say it's their job. But let me tell you, I get that there's lazy people out there but they're not all lazy. And some of them are working very hard. My son, for one, he works very hard. The mail part of the delivery system may be reduced right now because magazines or junk mail or whatever may be reduced, but packages have exploded as a lot of you resellers know. And it's like Christmas every day right now. My son personally, his um, time that he goes in has changed. They changed it. He doesn't go in as early for some reason. And now he gets off later. Why they did that. I don't understand. It's getting hotter. Why would you make someone go in later and work later? And you, I mean, you have more packages. So to me, that doesn't make sense, but just remember the people out there that are still working through all of this. I've noticed that, you know, everywhere, it seems like more and more people have become selfish and entitled. And that really bothers me because essential employees have continued to do their job through it. Personally working at a fast food restaurant and hearing stories of people being angry. Like I have to deal with complaints at my store. The complaints come in online and I've seen what people write and the things that people are complaining about. We're trying our best we're humans. We're not perfect. You know, sauces get met, missed, but to be angry about not getting your sauce and basically saying, 
your whole meal's ruined because you're missing your sauce. I don't get that logic in my head. I feel like it's a very entitled mentality that I don't understand. So I've seen this firsthand. My, um, I, and I've read the things on Facebook about mail and everything else. And some people, I've been fortunate that everything that I've ordered has come in on time, even from other resellers. I haven't had to wait. I feel like the mail carriers around here are very good. I can't speak for everybody. Obviously, you have a few mail carriers or other um, postal workers that may not fit that category, but I feel like we're all human beings. And that right now, especially, we all deserve that respect. My husband has worked through this. He is a mechanic. He works at a motorcycle shop. When other businesses started to get shut down, more people were out. And people who were supposed to be staying home were out playing. And as a result, my husband's work was busier than it had been. Instead of staying home, people were buying things to go play. And as of Friday, we, you know, the state of Texas has opened up like 25%. And then this coming Friday, you know, hair salons are going to be open, those kinds of things. You know, I have dealt with anxiety that I didn't know I had before. I've had bouts of anxiety in the past when I've been really, really stressed. And it's usually been over something that's affected my family personally. And this situation it has affected my family in the sense that my son-in-law works at home now, right now. He works for the school district. He's an IT guy. My daughter was laid off from her job. My daughter was supposed to receive two weeks severance pay. She got her unemployment paperwork submitted really fast. And this was at the beginning of April. She just now got the notice that in two weeks she'll be able to resubmit and hopefully be accepted. Her company waited until the 19th of April to pay her her two-week severance and they paid it all at once. So as a result, they're looking at it like she's made money this whole time and she's just now going to be able to get her unemployment. She was waiting for a long time to get her stimulus, and she just now got her stimulus payment today. Everybody has their own situation. Everybody's going through different things. Some people need money. Some people have continued to work through all of this. Um, I'm not knocking anybody because every situation's unique. I just know these are our situations. And... Some people, you know, have been able to try to make the best of being at home as a reseller or other other options. For me, I have continued to work. Um, I only do reselling part-time right now. I haven't had the luxury of being able, and I say luxury, meaning, you know, I'm very blessed to be working still, but I have not had the opportunity to dive into my reselling business the way that I wish that I could, but that's okay. I'm not really complaining about that, but the situation here stresses me out. I'm not here to take anybody's um, rights away from them and say what they want is wrong. And I would expect the same thing from anybody else. I don't want my feelings to be invalidated either. I live in a town where we are considered a hot spot right now. We have meat packing plants. We have people that live in our county that are bused to another meatpacking plant that is exploding with cases right now. And those people are bused out of our town to this meatpacking plant and then they come back on buses and they go, home to, they go home to their families. So the situation for me is I've been watching the numbers in my town and I can't help but feel the anxiety over it. 
it does stress me out. Um, I'm trying not to think about it too much when I'm working during the day. I try not to think about it when I have downtime. I do think about it. I look at the numbers that they release every day and it does stress, stress me out. Our town about a week and a half ago made the New York Times list. We were number five on the list and then I think at one point we were number four of hot spots and how fast this thing was growing here. And I couldn't help but feel stressed about that. Now we're a town of probably 250 to 300,000 people. So you look at our cases and you think, you know, that's, it's not bad at all. Today our cases reached in the 1300 range. It doesn't sound like a lot, but my area, I feel like we have been behind everybody else for a long time. My area is slowly starting to build. Statistically, looking at the chart, we are not plateauing. We are going straight up. That is what disturbs me right now. It's not the numbers. It's not even the fact that, that I'm worried about health-wise because I know statistically the percentage of people that do bad is low. My stress is today our number is in the 1300 range. A week ago, it was in the five to 600 range. According to what I'm looking at, to me it looks like our cases, like we doubled what we did last week. We just had the federal government come into our town to try to help get um, more testing done and, and try to figure out how to control what's happening here. It's not that huge yet. And I am trying not to be fearful because everything's opening back up. You know, you see these memes on Facebook of like the Black Plague and things that happened in the past and people got relaxed and they opened things back up and they were super happy. And then the second wave or the third wave was worse than the first. That is what I'm worried about. So for me personally, I've had a lot of anxiety in the past week and I've kind of stayed I've just stayed low key. I haven't been on YouTube as much. Um, just trying to deal with what's going on in my head and what's going on in my town and going out and about and, and looking at everything going on. And I, you know, I don't go out that much. I go to work um, to get my papers and then I come back home. If I have items that I need to ship out, my eBay store has been really slow like right now. So if I have items that I need to ship out, I may take it to the mailbox. Or if my son is still on his route, I will find where he is and I will go take my package to my son. Um, but I haven't had all that many go out in the past couple of weeks but I don't go out all that much. And it's not because I'm fearful of going out. It's more that I'm trying to just be mindful and cautious for myself and my own family. I haven't seen my grandchildren since the end of March. My oldest son hasn't seen, he's not held his daughters since that time. My oldest granddaughter, just turned seven in mid-April and he had to watch her open her presents from a distance. He hasn't been able to hold his baby. So these things take a toll on everybody. My granddaughter, you know, my grandchildren were here before this happened every weekend or every other weekend they would be over here and I would see them. I haven't seen them in a month and a half. My son, when he gave his daughter her Easter basket, he literally stood six feet away from her apartment door 
to watch her open her basket. And it was really, really hard on him. <clears throat> and um, since there's four of us under the same roof and we're all kind of going in different directions as far as our jobs, um, we're just all trying to say, stay safe. Which brings me to the anxiety that I feel. Um, I can't really explain if you've never dealt with anxiety before what it feels like. There's times that I'm okay. Like I said earlier, I will work. I'll pour myself into my work and I won't be thinking about the stuff of the world. But then there's other times that you feel the heaviness in my chest. I feel like I'm suffocating. I feel like there is this big cement block that somebody stuck right on top of me. And mentally, you know, I, I'm okay. But if I think too much about something, I just want to burst out crying. I am super, super stressed right now about physically going back to work. And somebody, when I ask somebody about it and I'm told, oh, it'll be fine. It's really not that bad. Then I know it's somebody that's not had to deal with anxiety before. And that is the struggle that I'm having right now is dealing with that, seeing my numbers go back up. Before the weekend, we had 12 deaths. Today, we're up to 18 deaths. So between Friday and today, six more people died. Now, again, you can say, well, your town is 250 to 300,000 people. I get that. I get statistically what you're saying. But my concern is, what if I were to pick it up and I'm a carrier and I bring it home to somebody that may not be able to handle it as well? I don't want to be that selfish person. I do all that I am supposed to do. I wear a mask when I go up to work. But somebody telling me that everything's going to be okay is not really going to calm my nerves. It's just something that I have to work through. I will feel better when I quit seeing our numbers going up. The numbers going up because of the meat packing plants, I can't help but be nervous about that. I can't. I don't know what's going to happen. Um, everybody around me, everybody in my town, everything looks normal. You wouldn't think that there is anything going on right now. Even at my store, the lines are awful. And it's outside only, like 25% capacity. We're not opening up our store. 25% capacity is pretty much the employees that work there. So I'm trying to stay focused and not worry too much. But I wanted to do this video to just get my thoughts out there and what it is that I'm feeling and what's going on in my head. Um, the feelings are real. They're, I'm sure there's a lot of people that feel like me that they keep things inside internally and I'm an internal person. I don't like to show what's going on, what my feelings are, but if you never had anxiety, you would not understand what that feeling is inside. So this video is not meant to be a doom and gloom video. It's more like a talking out loud video on what's going on here, how it affects me and my day-to-day -day life. You know, going forward, it's almost kind of like journaling this journey on a video to have record of what happened in my life, in the person's life. So going forward, I'm going to try to get back into focus on what I was originally trying to do, um, 
with my YouTube channel, with um, reselling. I'm about to work on this wall behind me. I took the blanket down because it makes my face really red. Um, I bought all the items to start working on my wall, so I am going to start doing that pretty soon. And I don't know if I'll video it or not. I was trying to make a funny video with my son. He's just been really busy and hasn't had time. So I've got to figure out if I'm still going to do that or not. And then I know at the end of the month, Rachel and I go back on to T's channel, Auctions for You. Um, we'll be back on to do another auction. So I'm kind of brainstorming on what I want to bring to that. I'd like to bring some good stuff. Watching these auctions, sometimes I'm pleasantly surprised on what people are interested in and what sells. So um, I have a ton of stuff. Um, I just, I continue to buy. I am very fortunate enough to have an auction house locally that um, I think I can get some pretty, pretty decent um, estate stuff from. Other than that, I need to do another video on what sold on eBay. I haven't done one of those since all of this stuff happened. Um, it's been almost two months now. And I haven't sold, like, I haven't been like other resellers selling, like, a ton of stuff on eBay. So um, I'll probably just do, like, a compilation of um, what solds for the last couple of months on eBay. Um, some weeks I probably only sold one or two items. So my video is probably not going to be that long when I, when I compile everything um, together into one video. And then... Um, I'd like to do a video on some ephemera that I have. I've bought two or three lots of old photographs that I think are really cool, so I'll probably put that in one video. Um, I'm not, there's some that I'm not gonna sell yet. There's one photo album that has a lot of pictures of um, Colorado, and my mom lives in Colorado, so I wanna show her all of those pictures. Um, before I decide whether or not I'm going to sell any of, of those pictures from that album. Other than that, I'm doing good. I'm still here. I just kind of took a little bit of a break for the last week to try to clear my head and focus. And my main thing was just coming on and um, video journaling my thoughts and kind of what I'm going through at this time and and my frustrations with people and seeing them just going back and forth on uh, Facebook or, or whatever, it's, it's crazy, you know? I, I just wish that everybody could, everybody's gonna have their own opinions of what's going on. And, you know, it's, it's really easy for someone to say, you know, you have every right to stay at home, blah, blah, blah. Well, yes and no. I mean, some of us can stay at home but some of us have no choice. And there's going to be a time that I'm gonna have to go back into work. And I just hope when that time comes, I hope that I'm ready for it. So it'll be okay. I'm not depressed. I just deal with anxiety from time to time and I know everything will be okay. I just wanted to video log my journey and, you know, everybody goes through things and this is one of my seasons right now. So, um, I appreciate all of you guys and I will see you next time.